Dr. Larry Santora. Thank you for watching Heart, Health, and Home today. I'm going to be talking about a very important topic and a very confusing topic, and that is chest pain and how it relates to the coronavirus. But first, we're going to hear from my first co-host, Nikki Johnson, who's a Medicare insurance expert, and uh, she'll talk about some of the nuances that have developed in the COVID era. And then we're going to hear from Mary Sanchez, who is a real estate expert here in Southern California. And the real estate market, as you know, has also been affected uh, by the uh, coronavirus pandemic. But please listen to the very end because we have a complimentary book and mask offer that I think you will enjoy. Thank you for watching today. Hi, my name is Nikki Johnson, and I'm a health insurance agent that specializes in Medicare. For those of you just tuning in, this means that I can help those who are first eligible for Medicare navigate the system, answer questions on the enrollment process, the different parts of Medicare, run a drug analysis on your specific medication list. I can even help those who've been on Medicare for many, many years, but want to make sure they have the most up-to-date benefits and that the plan that they're currently on is best suited for them. All of this is at no cost to you. You never ever pay an agent who's helping you with the Medicare enrollment process. Now, today I'd like to talk about something that I get asked a lot about, and that is the late enrollment penalty, also known as LEP. An LEP or late enrollment penalty can be added to your part B as in boy or part D as in drug coverage. If you sign up late for part B, meaning you had no credible coverage through an employer, through your spouse's employer, and you signed up late for Medicare Part B, you could be charged a late enrollment penalty. This late enrollment penalty will be based on every 12 month period that you were not signed up for Part B and did not have any other sort of credible coverage. As I mentioned earlier, this can also apply for your Part D drug coverage. The Part D late enrollment penalty is calculated using 1% of the national base beneficiary premium every month that you could have had prescription drug coverage, but chose not to enroll. Again, this means if you did not choose a private Part D Medicare drug plan, you should have been covered under a credible drug plan, either through an employer, a retiree, um, benefit program or your spouse. There's also many other ways too, but that's just to name a couple examples. For your reference in 2019, the national base premium uh, was $33.19 per month. If you're not sure if you're going to be penalized, your drug plan will inform you once you sign up. If you don't agree with this late enrollment penalty, you can always ask for a reconsideration. If you have any questions about a late enrollment penalty, your drug uh, prescription plan, or your medication list, please reach out to me and I'd be happy again to do a no cost benefit review. I'm here to help you navigate the system. So please send questions my way, either via email or the number below listed on the screen. Until next time. Hi, my name is Mary Sanchez. I specialize in real estate here in Orange County. I am with Cobalt Banker, and today I would like to unpack two myths in the home buying process as it relates to down payment and FICO score. So far this year, it's been a ride with the hurdles we've had from the COVID-19 and the record unemployment, to name a few. Amidst the roadblocks, however, in the recent month, Orange County home ownership rate rose again indicating that even in these times, Americans still feel confident about buying a home. Myth number one, I need 20% down on a home purchase. The 2020 Millennial Home Buyer Report shows that a home price at 400,000 with 20,000 down would be 80,000 and only about 15% of millennials have enough savings to cover that down payment while other potential buyers believe they need 20% down for the home of their dreams the reality is that this in this economy there are many assistance programs that are available with as little as 3% down with a little research which I can facilitate you may be able to enter the housing market sooner than you ever imagine Myth number two, I need a 780 FICO score or higher. 
In addition to the down payment, buyers can be confused about the FICO score it takes to qualify for a mortgage, believing that they need a credit score of 780 or higher. Allie May latest origination insight report, which focuses on the recent approved loans, shows the truth is over 50% of approved loans were granted in the FICO score of 750. Of the 50%, 18% were below 700 and 8.5% were below 600. Many myths of the home buyer's process are keeping motivated home buyers on the sidelines. And in reality, it does not need to be this way. Bottom line, if you're thinking about buying a home, you have more options than you realize. I'm here to maximize your buying opportunity. Feel free to call me. I'll be happy to help in any way I can and answer your questions and determine your next step. Thank you. I'm Dr. Larry Santora. Thank you for watching Heart, Health, and Home today. Today I'm going to talk about the coronavirus and chest pain. Uh, the typical symptoms related to the coronavirus are a fever, cough, shortness of breath, maybe some altered taste and altered smell, um, some sore throat, generalized fatigue, and sometimes they get chest pain. When they get the chest pain, it's sometimes confused for cardiac pain. So most patients who wind up in the emergency room get tested for uh, a cardiac problem, usually with cardiac enzymes called the troponin. Now the typical discomfort from a blocked artery in the heart usually occurs with exertion. So you start to get a chest tightness, burning, squeezing, heaviness that comes on with exertion uh, goes away with rest. So early on, it's a, an exertional type of symptoms. It may be in your chest, in your jaw, your throat, down both arms or one arm across your back, uh, or exertional shortness of breath. Where the confusion comes in is when the discomfort occurs at rest. When it occurs at rest, it is due to your heart. It's usually due to a heart attack. So heart attack symptoms are very similar and that is a tightness, a heaviness, a burning, a squeezing, uh, ache in your jaw, your throat, your arm, and usually there's some sweating with it, uh, shortness of breath with it, but it's an oppressive sensation. It can last usually 10 minutes or more because the artery usually is totally blocked. If you have these symptoms that last more than 10 minutes, you should call 911 or get to the emergency room. Now, if it's due to a coronavirus, usually it's shorter lived, it's not as oppressive and it may be more related to breathing and it gets a little bit confusing. One way to differentiate it uh, if it's due to the coronavirus is you usually have the coronavirus symptoms with them, usually uh, flu-like symptoms, which would be the fever, the shortness of breath, the cough, uh, sputum production will often be associated with the chest discomfort. Uh, however, you can have a heart attack and the coronavirus all at the same time and you would get the heart attack symptoms which I mentioned are the prolonged pressure, tightness, heaviness where you need to get to the emergency room. Often the chest discomfort that people have is usually not related to the coronavirus and it's not related to your heart and it occurs at rest and these are usually migratory sharp chest pains. They're very um, they're usually sharp. They get worse when you press on the chest or they get better to get worse or better when you turn or take a deep breath or when you expand your arms out or bring them in. So any type of positional, uh, sharp, short-lived pain, meaning uh, seconds to 30 seconds, usually that's all muscular, skeletal, and it's not related uh, to the coronavirus and it's not related to uh, blocked arteries in your heart. Now, we know with the coronavirus, patients who are admitted often have some uh, heart-related damage. The damage may be very, very mild and almost imperceptible, or it may persist after that you leave the hospital, and it could be unrelated to the blocked arteries at all. It could be more related to the virus affecting the heart muscle. Remember, the heart is just a pump that squeezes and squeezes, and you can get damage to the pumping action of the heart, and that's usually detected uh, with echocardiogram. So patients who have been hospitalized with the coronavirus often should have an evaluation after their discharge with an echocardiogram uh, to see if there's been any damage to the heart muscle, also with, with an EKG or electrocardiogram. 
and perhaps they may even need a nuclear stress test, which would tell us whether there's been any uh, damage to the arteries of the heart or restriction in the arteries to the heart. So it's always better to err on the side of caution if you have a prolonged chest tightness, pressure squeezing. It may not even be described as a pain. Often it is not described as a pain. You should seek 911 help if it's over 10 minutes uh, or uh, go directly to the emergency room. If it's due to the coronavirus, often it's a milder, short-lived pain, one minute to two minutes, maybe 30 seconds. Uh, and often you'll have the coronavirus symptoms connected to it and that would be the fever, cough, and shortness of breath. So with proper evaluation, most people um, will get through this. You know, the mortality rate is less than 1%, and if you get to the hospital on time and you have a blocked artery, we can fix that artery within 90 minutes, often with a stent, and get you back to a, a perfectly normal life. I'm Dr. Larry Santora. Thank you for watching Heart Health at Home, and we'll see you next week. We would like to send you uh, this book, it's a complimentary. It's a book that I wrote about coronary calcium screening, which is a way of picking up plaque or calcium in the coronary arteries. I think it is the most important test that we have in medicine today, and this book will explain the, the whole process. It also talks about other aspects of heart disease. Along with this book, we want to send you this cloth mask. They come in various colors. This is the one that I tend to uh, wear. It's very breathable and you can talk through it. You don't feel like you're smothering. It covers a lot of your face. It's washable. And we will send you one of these along with the book if you request it through hearthealthandhome at yahoo.com. And also please uh, press our subscribe button. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next week. I'm Dr. Larry Santora and this is Heart Health and Home.